Alors, notre parc national de Virunga ici était co compté parmi les, les, les parcs les plus attrayants de la planète. Et on a vu dans la ville de Kisangani deux armées étrangères. L'armée ougandaise, l'armée rwandaise qui se battaient dans la ville. Ça bah, serait le dernier endroit en RDC où on viendrait chercher du pétrole. These forests in the Democratic Republic of Congo are home to 10,000 species of plants, 400 species of mammals, and endangered animals like the okapi and mountain gorilla. But the forests and their inhabitants are under threat from logging, mining, oil exploration, poaching and war. A small band of conservationists led by Rene Gongo stand in between this lush green jungle and destruction. Rene Gongo grew up near Lac Vert, or Green Lake, in the eastern part of the DRC. Cet espace s'appelle le lac vert parce qu'à cause de la couleur verte de l'eau qu'on voit de loin. Et pendant que nous on venait visiter ici dans nos jeunesse, il y avait de la verdure partout. Il y avait toute une forêt. On ne pouvait même pas accéder à cet endroit. Et le passage de réfugiés en 1994 a fait que tout ça a été décimé pour la production de bois de chauffe. He often visited the Virunga, the country's oldest national park. His visits to the park were filled with a sense of wonder for the animals and the trees. He was inspired to become a conservationist, a calling which he knew could be dangerous. Et je me rappelle, on nous montrait à l'époque des, des, des cimetières, des gardes qui sont morts pour la, la conservation du parc. Surtout à l'époque de la guerre, de la rébellion. Des gens qui ont donné leur vie. Et chaque fois quand je passais là-bas, j'avais du respect pour ces hommes-là. Et petit à petit, ça a forgé ma, ma conviction qu'il fallait faire euh, ces études. As a boy, René could hardly fathom the breadth of the area that Congo's forests occupy. The Virunga National Park is 7,800 square kilometers in size, or 3,000 square miles. It forms part of the Congo forest, which is mainly contained in the DRC, but also spreads into Cameroon, the Central African Republic, Equatorial Guinea, and the Republic of Congo or Congo Brazzaville and Gabon, a total size of over 2 million square kilometers. This is second only to the 5.5 million square kilometers the Amazon rainforest occupies. This is why many experts have called it the world's second set of lungs. In 1987, René joined the University of Kisangani to study biology. He later married Marie Viviane, who was a humanitarian worker. Toward the beginning of the Rwandan genocide in 1994, he took his first step in becoming an environmental leader. C'est de cette manière que nous avons créé avec quelques amis une, 
une organisation non gouvernementale que nous avons baptisée Océan. C'était en 1994 et nous l'avons appelée Océan, organisation concertée des écologistes et amis de la nature, parce qu'on se sentait proche de la nature. Cyril Adebou was with René from the beginning. He remembers the ocean was the first organization of its kind in the DRC. Il y avait ces, ces types d'activistes là, il y avait aussi les gens qui faisaient ces mal humanitaires, mais quand on a commencé avec Océan et l'allure qu'on a pris, et on a, ça a inauguré en fait la, la nouvelle génération d'activistes euh, sur les questions des communautés locales et, et, et René il est parmi ces gens là qui ont, qui ont commencé ce mouvement. Cyril remembers confronting the sad results of the Rwandan genocide. Millions of victims displaced, crossing into the DRC, hungry, poor, desperate. Trying to survive in refugee camps around the Kisangani area, they started cutting trees for firewood. They had few other resources. Évidemment, c'était une catastrophe humanitaire, mais ça avait engendré une catastrophe écologique. Their efforts at trying to get the refugees to stop using wood for fuel took to the airwaves. For nine years, René hosted a weekly radio show called Man and His Environment. The purpose of the program was to get the attention of the civilians who live in and around the forest. He created a plantation of 20,000 trees in the eastern province to try and make up for those being cut. With Surreal and Ocean, René documented the groups behind illegal mining, an activity that has had devastating impacts on the environment across the country. The Democratic Republic of Congo has seen fighting for the last two decades. The fighting was initially fueled after the Rwandan genocide in 1994 forced millions of people across the border to the DRC. Over five million people are estimated to have died during the various periods of war. Most casualties were civilians, women and children. René remembers the situation vividly. Et on a vu dans la ville de Kisangani des armées étrangères l'armée ougandaise, l'armée rwandaise qui se battait dans la ville pour le contrôle des de, de comptoirs des diamants. Et nous, en tant qu'écologistes, on travaillait sur les questions forestières, mais nous avons été sollicités par des organisations qui travaillaient sur les, les, les conflits armés et l'exploitation des minéraux. C'était dangereux parce que c'était un engagement qui avait beaucoup de risques. The soldiers often threatened residents or activists who complained about their activities. Soldiers killed animals for ivory and meat. Il y a des groupes armés qui qui maintenant profitent de l'insécurité pour euh, d'abord traquer les, les éléphants à cause de l'ivoire, mais aussi ils sont en train de tuer les antilopes, les bifles pour venir vendre la, la, la viande à Goma et dans d'autres sites autour de, du parc. They also cut down the trees and mine the land for valuable minerals. Vous arrivez dans ces sites-là, vous demandez si vous êtes dans la planète Terre ou dans une autre planète Mars ou autre, parce que ça ne ressemble à rien à ce que nous pouvons imaginer sur la Terre, parce que c'est des, des, des transformations énormes. Vous avez des cratères René is not the only one willing to face danger to protect the forests. Vital Katembo is an environmentalist and former guide in the Virunga National Park. Having this access to a certain area 
which is rich in minerals, and being the one to decide militarily, then it's an opportunity to enrich oneself. And this has become now a real problem for the army control and also for the rebels themselves. Vital has watched his beloved forests encroached upon and cut down. The road to the Virunga has been closed during the conflict, cutting off the tourist revenues that sustain the park. He realizes that it is not only the war that threatens the forests around Virunga. Most of the household in Goma, I can say even 85% of the household, they use firewood. And that firewood comes basically from the national park or from the surrounding plantation. But the demand is so high that they can, it cannot be met just by what is provided by the plantation. So there is more and more pressure on the park resources. The threats to the Virunga are many, but this forest is not Rene's only worry. About 270 kilometers to the southwest is the Kahuzi Biega National Park. It lies across Lake Kivu, near the city of Bukavu. Kahuzi Biega National Park was established in 1970. It is best known for its families of mountain gorillas. It has also suffered from the effects of war and the scourge of poaching. Rene visited often when he was younger and the gorillas plentiful. Et comme étudiant, j'ai eu l'occasion de passer mes stages ici, mes stages professionnels et on a visité les 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 parcs, on a eu l'occasion de rencontrer les gorilles. The park's greatest attraction is the eastern lowland gorilla, the largest of four gorilla subspecies. It's quite a trek to visit gorillas. They move every day, searching for new areas to forage for food. Here we meet other allies of Rene's in trying to protect Congolese forest life. Lambert is a ranger and has been tracking gorillas for 24 years. And now we are close just to Manco family. We are that of the, of the best the large family who we have in Kauzi Pianka National Park, Chimanuka family. They are a large family with uh, 37 gorillas on this family. At first the gorillas are shy and elusive, but eventually they come into view. This park has nine gorilla families, only two of them are used to human presence. Although concrete statistics are not available, it has been estimated that by 1999, half of the gorilla population in the park had died. War, deforestation and poaching have thinned their numbers.
Next door to the park, an animal sanctuary gives refuge to monkey and ape species at risk from poaching. Radani Shuli is the park's manager and a long-time friend of Renee's. Dans ce sanctuaire, nous avons le chimpanzé, nous avons toute catégorie de singes que nous avons pu récupérer entre les mains de braconniers. Pendant la guerre, les gens ont voulu faire la, le trafic de, de bébés chimpanzés et nous, on a organisé l'espoir des patrouilles pour essayer de récupérer tous ces animaux. Rada, Lambert and René have been fighting the threats to the primates' continued existence for decades through educating nearby residents, lobbying governments and stopping the trafficking of baby gorillas and chimpanzees across the border. Pendant un temps, il y a eu ce vrai trafic de bébés gorilles et pour arriver à, à prendre un bébé gorille, il faut tuer décimer pratiquement toute la famille. Il y a eu, euh, nous devons le reconnaître, un grand travail de, de conservationnistes. Beaucoup d'organisations ont combattu le trafic des bébés gorilles parce que ces, ces gorilles sont vendus dans des zoos à travers le monde. Quand on a interdit ces pratiques, il y a eu euh, moins de trafic des bébés gorilles. While the biggest direct threat to the gorillas is poaching, the environment has another enemy, logging. The expansion of Bukavu City, which borders the park, has put enormous pressure on the trees, which provide wood for construction. About 1,600 kilometers to the west, near the DRC capital, Kinshasa, the Bakongo forest has been decimated. The road via the port of Matadi and then to Boma reveals stretches where the trees have been cut and the ground burnt. Large trucks carrying logs of wood pass by regularly. Renee has been preparing reports on logging activities since 1996. His information was put before the UN Security Council in a special panel report in 2003. By the beginning of 2009, the pressure on the DRC government had forced a legal review of 156 forest concessions, which found 91 of them to be illegal. This hasn't stopped the cutting. Of the huge forests in this area known as Bakongo, there are now only two remaining areas of primary rainforests. When I take a province like the Bakongo, qui a eu le malheur d'avoir une grande forêt et d'être située à côté de la mer. Donc à travers les deux ports, le port de, de Matadi et le port de Boma, il a été plus facile d'évacuer les grimes vers euh, l'Europe, vers l'Amérique, vers l'Asie. C'est comme ça qu'à moins de 50 ans d'exploitation forestière, toute la forêt de Mayombe a disparu pratiquement. Prince Nganga is a researcher in the Luki Biosphere Reserve. He believes that the population increase is straining the park's resources. When someone comes to do the carbonization, he cuts anything that is there, even the lianes. He cuts everything, he cuts his mail, he cuts the fire, and it's really the forest that disappears. Forest guards make up the front line of René's compatriots in trying to keep the forest safe. Living on meager salaries, they carry out the difficult work of patrolling the forest 
capturing poachers or people illegally cutting down trees. But catching and arresting people does not solve the root causes of these problems. The UN Food and Agricultural Organization estimates that 75% of those in the DRC live on one dollar a day. For these forests to survive, René and his environmentalists realize that they must work with local communities. Parce que pour les communautés, la forêt c'est un supermarché. Vous arrivez dans une zone forestière, les, les, les femmes, les enfants, même les adultes vont dans la forêt pour chercher à manger. C'est aussi leur pharmacie. Et dans les zones où la forêt est en train de disparaître, ces communautés sont devenues très vulnérables parce que c'est comme les supermarchés qui a plus feu. These farmers once had land in the reserve, but they now work with René and Fisi Landu. They have started beekeeping as an alternative activity to cutting down trees. It provides them with an income to support their families. Comme je ne le brutalise pas, il ne peut pas attaquer. Si j'essaie de le brutaliser, à ce moment il va attaquer. Il faut être calme. La récolte, c'est possible juste presque à la date de la rentrée scolaire. D'où, après avoir vendu le miel, je n'ai pas assez de difficultés pour le frais scolaire de mes enfants. Je peux protéger les réserves, mais d'autres gens ne peuvent pas. À cause des manques de vie. Donc les moyens, nous n'avons pas de moyens. Il n'y a pas des emplois. While René and his friends enlist locals who are concerned, they seem overmatched by the rich and powerful who are hungry for the DRC's abundant natural resources. En tout cas, il y a beaucoup de Libanais qui sont impliqués, beaucoup de Chinois qui sont impliqués dans dans, dans cette exploitation et Récemment, euh, les organisations euh, environnementales belges ont identifié des grimes au port de, de Anvers, des grimes qui étaient d'origine illégale. Donc il y a plusieurs rapports qui ont, qui ont monté cela. Et quand vous arrivez au port de Beaumont et de Matag, vous trouvez beaucoup de grimes qui sont en train d'être exportées de manière illégale. The newest players in the resource scramble here are oil companies. This takes us back across the country to the Virunga National Park where René started his conservation career. In 2012, two oil companies, Soko Oil and Total, were given permits to explore for oil in Virunga. Total eventually withdrew, but UK-based Soko Oil is authorized to explore. René who now works with the WWF, is working on an international campaign to keep oil out of the Virunga. Innocent Jean Derun Tumba is the provincial minister of the environment in North Kivu. Je me rappelle, eh, vers les années, eh, vers les années 79, eh, 1980, vous notez pas que national de Virunga ici était co compté parmi les, les, les parcs les plus attrayants de la planète et ça faisait entrer beaucoup d'argent. Hein. Si on pouvait revenir à des situations pareilles, certaines gens pour, pouvaient facilement eh, dire que non, non, 
On continue avec le tourisme et on met de côté l'exploitation du moins l'exploitation pétrolière. For René, tourism is the solution, but the profits from oil are greater. In the first quarter of 2011 alone, the top six global oil companies made 38 billion dollars in profit. Soko, which is exploring in Virunga, earned more than 600 million dollars. Elsewhere on the continent, oil drilling has come hand in hand with oil spills, increasing poverty and environmental degradation. If oil is extracted in the DRC, it could spell disaster for the 3,000 animals that live in the Virunga National Park. Virunga serait le dernier endroit en RDC où on viendrait chercher du pétrole. D'abord, c'est en violation des lois du Congo, mais aussi en violation des, des conventions au niveau international. Je ne vois pas ces entreprises qui viennent ici, c'est des multinationales, mais qui ne peuvent pas faire la même chose dans leur pays d'origine. While René's partners are often on the front lines challenging poachers, his own efforts are often harder to see. But his work creating ocean and educating people across the country, his endless lobbying of governments, the UN and people around the world asking them to intervene and keep the Congo forests from destruction, his fearless monitoring of groups during the war have made him one of the country's greatest environmental leaders. Dear all, my name is Sanita Brodean. In 2009, these efforts led to René receiving the Right Livelihood Award, sometimes called the Alternative Nobel Prize. To present Mr. René Ngongo from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Ce prix qui nous est accordé en ce moment, surtout à la veille de Copenhague, n'est pas un fait du hasard. C'est un signal fort que vous lancez à la communauté internationale pour attirer son attention sur ce précieux patrimoine qu'ensemble nous avons préservé. Nous citons les forêts de la République démocratique du Congo. Merci pour votre attention. Nous vivons dans, dans, dans un petit village où la déforestation dans, au Congo peut avoir des conséquences en Norvège ou aux Pays-Bas. Donc tant que les gens n'ont pas compris cela et qu'ils doivent diminuer aussi leur taux d'émission, notre planète est vraiment très menacée. While René can't protect the whole planet, he will continue to do what he can for the Congo's forests. And if he is successful in getting the world to look for its resources, minerals, building material, firewood, and oil elsewhere, he will have an ocean of trees to appreciate for generations to come. But he will have to stay vigilant for new threats that will inevitably arise in the future.